we are pretty excited. We are on the first adventure in the new trail new bus. trail bus. And it is something that you can do in your car, but it is one of our favorite drives in the state of Colorado. Yes. And it is going from Glenwood Springs all the way to Montrose, Colorado. Delta. Well, Delta, for so for us. <laughs> but you can take this all the way to Montrose, but it's a really great way to see some of the best scenery Colorado has. And you can do this for leaf peeping. You can do this to go see the Crystal Mill. There are so many cool things that are along this way, including natural hot springs. And a fish hatchery bag that we missed. Yes. We haven't this, done that yet. This road has so many features and we're gonna show them the ones that we can along the way so you can enjoy it and know what to expect. But this is going to be the scenic drive. State Highway 133 in Colorado is a stunning scenic byway that takes you through some of the most breathtaking landscapes in the Karaki Mountains. Winding through the heart of the North Fork Valley, this highway connects Glenwood Springs to multiple small towns, offering travelers a glimpse of Colorado's diverse terrain. From lush agricultural fields to towering alpine peaks, along the route, you'll pass through the historic mining towns and cross magnificent McClure Pass, which is known for its jaw-dropping views, especially during the vibrant fall months. State Highway 133 is not just a road, it's an adventure through Colorado's natural beauty. Features along this drive that you get to that you get to enjoy is the Crystal yes, River. Right so the there. Crystal River is known as its um, gold, what are they, gold waters of Colorado? Mm -hmm. And so that means that there's certain regulations around them that keeps them pristine. So the Crystal River is comes, uh, it goes through the Crystal Mill, and so it comes down and goes and joins up with the Colorado in Glenwood Springs. So it's a super cool river, and honestly, it's got hot springs along the way. There's a couple, two hot springs that if you, you look, you can Google them. Um, sometimes they're overrun with people, other times you won't see anybody there. It just depends on when you're just hitting be careful them. careful of all the pee. <laughs> I don't think so. But I'm sure people pee. the Crystal River is super awesome. And if you have time to spend, you can actually pull off in um, Redstone. And they actually have a cool little river walk you can go to and play in the river down there. So highly recommend spending time at the Crystal River on this drive. Once you reach Redstone, you'll see some really interesting things on the side of the road. Nestled into the rugged landscape, you'll find the historic Coke oven. These fascinating stone structures built in the late 19th century were once used to produce charcoal for the area's mining operations. These ovens are a reminder of the region's industrious past. Today, they are a unique roadside attraction. The Coke oven stand is a testament to the ingenuity and hard work of the pioneers who lived here and labored in this valley. Some of them have been reconstructed over time, but there are a lot of them who are still standing exactly the way they were since the, they were used last. So we're doing a mileage update. 36.4 miles in, obviously mountain driving. 19.6, 2.7 turbo, rocking it. So how love are you it. liking the turbo so far? Love it, love the torque, it's great. Like you know, I'm obviously braking and taking it gentle, it just pulls hills, it doesn't shift nearly as much as our Colorado or our 5.3 we had at one point in time. Nope. It's awesome, highly recommend it so far. Long term update later. It's one of the overlooks that you can see while you're driving and it's a really great spot to get an overview of the valley so we'll show that to you here when you're going up mcclure pass there are a lot of places for you to stop and admire the views around and there are ample room to pull several cars over McClure Pass is a high mountain pass in the Rocky Mountains standing at an elevation of 8,755 feet. Historically, the pass served as a critical route for the Ute tribes who used it for hunting and trade long before the European settlers arrived. In the late 19th century, the pass became an essential corridor for miners and settlers during the Colorado's mining boom, connecting the North Fork Valley with Carbondale and Aspen. Today, McClure Pass is known for its breathtaking views with aspen groves and rugged peaks, making it a popular destination for travelers both seeking history, hunting, scenic beauty, you name it. We are now down off of McClure Pass. McClure Pass has a lot of history with it, and I'm sure by now I have already talked your ear off about it. But we are currently driving by the Peonia Reservoir. It's really hard to see over there, yeah. but it is still full. Got to try and show them here. Which? Uh, there you go. 
It actually is full for this time of year. It is never usually uh, this it's full. it's a mud puddle, guys. All right, there you go. That's the little reservoir there. That is the reservoir. You can fish it usually, because they do stock it. But nice. it is a really cool reservoir. It's usually mud pit by now, but we've had a lot of good rains the last two years and has really kept it full. So, highly recommend if you're up here to drive by it. There's actually also a fish hatchery and Hotchkiss coming up oh, yeah. that does amazing that. tours. <laughs> and fun. it's one of Everett's favorite places, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he loves the fish hatchery in Hotchkiss. So. the entire zip code back there. Yes, look at that zip code. <laughs> Way more space. So spacious compared to the like ZR2 bison. <laughs> this is a mountain limo. It's a mountain limo. <laughs> So once you kind of are getting closer to Paonia, you're going towards a town called Somerset. Yep. And so anybody who isn't from Western Colorado or is keen to how electricity works, we in this area have coal plants. Bituminous coal. Bituminous coal, yes. And so that is called clean coal. And I know that's a whole thing, but trust me, clean coal it's is better. Cleaner. It's way cleaner than the other type of coal. This plant up here, in fact, that you're going to be seeing on the footage I'm putting up is known for shipping its coal actually to Japan. They love our coal. They love our coal. Actually, they're in fact trying to buy another one right now just so they can have it. Exactly. So this area, it it used to have a lot of United States contracts until all the government stuff got involved, and so Thanks, now they. Government. Thank you. At least, at least we're still, <laughs> at least we're still producing coal. But the western part of Colorado has a lot of coal mines. Once you pass the coal mine, you'll quickly enter the town of Somerset. Somerset, Colorado is a small historic coal mining town located along State Highway 133. Founded in the early 20th century, Somerset played a key role in Colorado's coal mining industry with its mines supplying energy to the region's railroads and industry. While mining has diminished, Somerset remains as a living reminder of the area's industrial past. It's nestled between the towering mountains and the Gunnison River. The town is quiet, it's off the beaten path, and it's a great stop for travelers exploring the scenic byway and surrounding wilderness. And what you'll notice is that the highway is almost right on top of some of these houses in here, so it feels a little bit tight as you drive, but it is a really cool place to go through if you've never been. And before you know it, you'll finally end up in one of Colorado's more cutesy towns. Enter into the town of Paonia. And Paonia is kind of a cutesy little weird town. <laughs> they have cherries. They do a lot of um, produce in this area. And they also have some arts fairs. So it's kind Get of a- cider, please. They have cider. They have all kinds of little agricultural things coming through here. You can actually go and pick your own cherries when oh, they're in yes. season and they also do wine and there's a lavender farm up on the hill so they, if you are into some cool little local farms you definitely want to make a stop in Paonia it is pretty neat and just like that before you know it your scenery will switch from pine trees to more of a desert environment as you near Hotchkiss Colorado Hotchkiss you can get from Hotchkiss to Crawford, that's kind of like a nice little crossroads area. You get into like this area that's in between Hotchkiss and where the desert starts before you hit Delta. And this area is actually some of the areas that you can take to get to the back area of the Grand Mesa. And oh, so yeah. if you're into recreation, uh, this is how we get to Good Enough. Mm -hmm. If you've ever watched our RAM videos, then that is there's an access or two that will take you back up into the Mesa. So this is kind of like our best kept secret, so shh. Quit putting my stuff on YouTube, that's <laughs> my favorite place. <laughs> but you can Google it and figure it out, but Don't this is where- Google it. This, so as far as the scenic drive goes, everything from here on turns, the, the com climate completely changes. Yes, you go from desert. high mountains- It's only 101 degrees Into here. the desert adobe lands, which still have some really cool things like the Gunnison and so the North Fork of the Gunnison and the regular Gunnison will join up and they become a bigger river that goes through Delta as well as some of the best historical sites like one of the oldest si uh, pots that has ever been found in the U.S. was found over in this desert. So little things it may not look like much but there's a lot of history to be had in those hills and so we're going to show those to you and then we next time we check in we'll probably be signing out. 
The stretch of land between Hotchkiss and Delta offers a unique contrast to the lush valleys and towering mountains that we witnessed before. This high desert region is characterized by arid landscapes, sagebrush, and dramatic mesas, showcasing the rugged beauty of Colorado in the western slope. The desert's stark, open terrain serves as a quiet passage between the agricultural communities of Delta and the valley, where travelers can witness the transition from barren desert to fertile farmland. This highway drive that we've taken you on today is truly shows Colorado's diverse and often surprising landscapes. From high mountain peaks to desert bound below, it's an amazing drive. 54.4 miles to the gallon. That's pretty good. It's doing really good. It's doing really good. I need to check other things. Ugh. Oh, no, this is safe, so don't worry about it. 461 miles range left. Uh, air pressures are good. 90%, 98% oil life. Brakes are good. Transmission 198. And four hour and four engine hours on it. It is basically the end of the scenic drive. We are almost into Delta. If you want to do another scenic drive and kind of put it with this one, you could totally go on Highway 65, which goes over the Grand Mesa and will take you all the way to Grand Junction. Yep. So that one we highly recommend. Uh, we'll have to take you on it sometime in the future, but today is not that day since we are wanting to get home. That's it for our nice scenic drive. The trail boss did wonderfully. Sounds great. I'm no mileage update. Let's do a mileage 25.3 MPGs. Wow. 98.7 miles. 25.2 it drops all the time. Oh, no, it's because I'm speeding. I'm doing 60 to 65. <laughs> all right, speeding for braking. Don't tell anybody. It's supposed to be 55. I tried to keep it close. But anywho, we're going to wrap it up here, and we're going to have some more Trail Boss content coming up here very soon, we promise. Yes. And I think the next thing on the agenda might be flex testing, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Oh, but we'll see fun. you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.